Hi, it's Dot from DotsTrot.com, and today I want to talk a little turkey with you. Um, I love making turkeys now. However, I have to say, when I first started off uh, in my married life, I hate it. I dreaded Thanksgiving because I could never consistently get a turkey browned and sort of a nice... Um, nice, uh, crispy skin on the turkey. Uh, I tried many things. I started off actually putting the turkey in a cooking bag. I'm sure many of you probably have tried that. It always cooked really nice, but I couldn't really get it a nice color and, and, and consistency with the skin. Well, I discovered a little recipe which works wonders, and this is the way I cook my bird all the time now. And what you need is obviously a turkey, and this one is a 22-pounder. Uh, it's a pretty big one. Uh, some cheesecloth, of all things. Uh, three sticks of butter, plus uh, maybe about four to five tablespoons of butter for the actual bird to, to rub on the bird. Um, I use sea salt and black pepper and a bottle of wine. Wine is always a good thing to have when you cook, as far as I'm concerned. So you put all these things together and you make a wonderfully delicious, juicy bird that has um, great uh, crunchy skin and also a beautiful brown color at the end when you're done with it. So the first thing we're going to do is melt the three sticks of butter and combine it with the wine. So I'm going to head over to my stove. So that's where we're going to start. I've melted three sticks of butter. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add all of my wine. And pretty much for the wine, you don't want to use anything sweet. Uh, you want a Chardonnay and as dry as you possibly can have it. The, the one thing you need to know is that since this is about low carb cooking, whoops, since this is about low carb cooking, is that with um, the Chardonnay that you're adding, it adds about two carbs to the turkey. Now, meat you typically doesn't have any carbs to it, but this does add about two carbs per serving. Um, so just keep that in mind. That still is pretty minimal for what you're going to get in return as far as I'm concerned, as far as taste and texture of the bird. Now I've combined the butter and the wine. Uh, what I'm going to do now is add in my cheesecloth. And now most cheesecloths you buy are about uh, nine square feet. You want to fold it into a square such as this. And um, it's about four layers of individual sheets, if you will, of cheesecloths together. So what you're going to do is you're just going to put it in here, take your spoon, and you're just going to soak it. And you're going to let it soak and get as much moisture as you possibly can. Now this mixture, once the cheesecloth com comes out of it, the rest of the mixture you're going to be using to baste your turkey about every 30 minutes. But the cheesecloth is going to rest on top of the turkey to keep it from overbrowning, but also trapping the moisture inside of the bird while adding the lovely butter and Chardonnay flavor to it. So that's just gonna sit there and soak. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put on some gloves. Um, primarily because I have a little bit, I cut my hand the other day. I cut, I have a little bit of cut right there in that finger. And also because I've got fingernail polish that's chipping off like you wouldn't believe and I certainly don't want it on the bird. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do first is I have some sea salt and black pepper, about two teaspoons each. And what I'm going to do, I've already go, gone ahead and pre-combined them. I'm going to go ahead and add them to the inside of the bird just to season it. I'm going to do another teaspoon, another half teaspoon. This is a half teaspoon measuring that I have. So I'm just going to do that to, measure, to flavor the inside of the bird. I'm also going to add a pinch to the neck cavity as well. Now, I'm not stuffing my bird. I typically don't stuff my bird. If you like to stuff your bird, go right ahead. Knock yourself out. I tend not to. No particular reason, but, you know, I just don't. Now, at this point, I probably would have already um, folded the wing tips of the bird underneath. However, this particular bird that I got, um, the wing tips were cut off. So I don't have to worry about folding it underneath. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take my um, four tablespoons of butter, and I'm going to go ahead and... I let them soften, and I'm going to go ahead and rub the butter on the bird itself. So you just the butter helps brown the bird, and also again adds some flavor, helps with the moisture of the bird. So you just want to rub it all over your bird, little bird. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So I've went ahead and I've seasoned or I buttered the bird. Now I'm going to season it.
So I'm just taking my sea salt and black pepper and I'm just rubbing it or spraying it on top again to add more flavor to the bird. You want to get all over your bird, including the front part too. <laughs> all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the th cheesecloth. We're ready to put this on the bird. It's soaked. What you want to do is wring the cheesecloth. You still want it damp, but you just don't want it soaking where everything is running off of it. And you want to spread it out and you're going to put it just and cover your bird up. You want to cover as much of the bird as you can. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of the bird hanging out. Now this particular bird, I normally would have tied the legs, but it comes with a little strip behind it on the butt and it uh, basically tucks the legs into it. So I left it like that. So here we go. It's all set. What you typically do is I'm going to go ahead and baste it. This is still warm. So I'm going to baste it a little bit. A little bit more. And this is what you're going to be doing in 30 minute intervals. Oop, I got a little bit off the side, so I just have to be careful with that. Is that I'm going to be basting this turkey every 30 minutes. It goes in the oven. This is something to keep in mind. Is it goes in the oven for the first 30 minutes at 450 degrees. In that first half hour, I'm going to baste it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the temperature down to 350. That's really important. Otherwise, you really do end up overcooking this bird. And you don't want to do that. So my bird is all set. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven. Turkey's in the oven. Uh, when it goes in the oven, you want to put it on the lowest level the rack can go on. So all my racks are sitting right behind me. Um, and what I'm going to do now is the basting um, uh, liquid, which is the butter and wine. I'm going to put this on the stove because what you want to make sure of is that it stays warm. You don't have to keep it on a, on a heat while the turkey is cooking that 30 period window before each basting. But you do want to make sure about five to 10 minutes before you baste, you want to turn your heat on on low because what will start happening as you go is the butter will start solidifying and gets uh uh, it gets thick essentially and you can't really baste your turkey that way you want to keep it as a liquid so the heat a low heat on the stove works just fine now the other thing um, I need to do and something you might want to think of is I have um, a tracking system that I use which basically it's called timer plus and it's free you can get it off of the app store and essentially what it does is I put in little timers here so I have one for basting so as soon as that turkey went into the oven, I started the countdown for the turkey. It's about four hours, four and a half hours. So I had it set for about 4.15. I do a little thing called tin foil check, which is about an hour before the turkey's done. I start checking it more often. It's a reminder for me to make sure certain parts of it are not over browning, especially once I take the cheesecloth off. And then the basting time period, it's every 30 minutes. So I always hit the reset. So I carry my phone with me. It goes right into my pocket of my apron. So I'm preparing anything else. I can always hear that timer going off and I make sure that I have the turkey else ready to go and I can hit every, every mark I need to make sure I keep it basted and moist and make sure that, and I can check it to make sure it's not over browning. All right. Turkey's out of the oven. It's hit the actual temperature it needed to go about, it's been about four and a half hours. Um, about an hour before I took it out of the oven, I went ahead and took off the cheesecloth that you can see it's all nice and brown. Um, but all I did was put it back in the oven and baste it. And then I did at about oh, 30 minutes before it was done. I did add a little bit of tin foil to the wings and a little bit to the breast just to prevent it from browning too much. You can see it got a little bit dark there. So I browned it so I wouldn't blacken. But otherwise what I'm going to do now is just let it rest for about 30 minutes. And then at that point, we tender, juicy bird. And that includes the white meat, because the white meat can get really, really dry even after a day. This stays moist um, for even after the turkey's been put in the fridge. So go ahead and give it a shot for your next for your Thanksgiving coming up. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit like and then also subscribe for more great low-carb cooking videos. Till next time.